so good evening everyone this is dr vineet sahgal and welcome to the next session on the numero uno in ophthalmology series i am your ophthalmology educator and today we would discuss about a very important topic that is hypertensive retinopathy so we have studied till now about diabetic okay. retinopathy and okay. now we would study about the hypertensive retinopathy so few important points that i would tell you before i start the main session that you can see my all the special classes that are the free live classes exclusively on the academy learning app you can download it from the ios store and the play store and if you are a neat pg aspirant you can basically subscribe for any of the plus course which is going on and you can have the guidance of the top educators throughout the country day in and day out in your own mobile phone you can have my exclusively live lectures on the unacademy app where i would be mentoring you for the ophthalmology preparation throughout day and night and lot of plus courses are going on in the app and there would be few more courses which would be starting from the month of march so you can enroll for any of them as per your need okay so those who are the free students who are basically using it for preparation and are not subscribing it till now you can also have advantage you can see the free live classes you can ask your doubts and you can basically subscribe for the neat pg 320 series fmg neat pg 2022 test series scholarship test grand test or the inict daily t20 series okay so with this i would be coming to my main session today there i would be talking about the hypertensive retinopathy okay so we talked about the diabetic retinopathy the main pathogenesis there was the your exudation okay so these vasculitis the diabetes basically causes the breakdown of the blood retinal barrier which is causing the pathology there in the hypertensive retinopathy the pathogenesis is different the pathogenesis is that it the whenever you have a high blood pressure it basically constricts your blood vessels and this basically causes the increased vascular permeability so i write here that the pathogenesis is vasoconstriction and increased vascular permeability okay these are the pathogenesis of hypertensive retinopathy now like microaneurysms that occur in diabetic retinopathy similarly there can be signs in the hypertensive retinopathy as well what is the first sign the first sign is generalized arteriolar narrowing okay so jo arteries hai wo constrict kar jati hai okay then after the generalized arteriolar narrowing then you can have the focal signs of arteriolar narrowing as well normally when we say that what is the av ratio okay what i say right here is av ratio this i call the arterio venous ratio okay so we have the caliber of the arteries and the caliber of the veins in the eye so normally this av ratio is around 2 is to 3 whenever there is a hypertensive retinopathy this av ratio decreases let's say it goes to 1.5 is to 3 and even in severe cases it can go to 1 is to 3 okay so the arteriolar arteries are basically decreasing in their caliber okay so the first thing is that you would have a generalized arteriolar narrowing and you would have decrease in the av ratio and then you can have various signs where you would have a focal narrowing of the blood vessels okay what are the signs we would discuss today so we have generalized arteriolar narrowing av ratio that is decreased and focal narrowing after this we can have some signs which you have to remember the names okay do not go into too much of deep just remember the names that are the saluce sign bonnet sign and gun sign what they actually mean the saluce sign is basically the deflection of veins at the av crossing okay i call it saluce sign okay so this is basically let's say artery going on and at the junction of vein it is basically deflecting okay this is i call saluce sign then the next sign is bonnet sign bonnet is basically banking of the veins distal to the av crossing okay so b is banking of the veins distal to the av crossing you can just remember it by b goes with b okay then the third sign is 
the gun sign which is basically the tapering of the veins okay so these are few signs which you can see in a patient who is having focal narrowing because of the hypertensive retinopathy and as there is a diabetic retinopathy similarly you can have rnfl infarcts in the superficial layer okay so i write it rnfl infarcts and what i call them they have the basically blurry margins yellowish in color i call it cotton wool spots okay so we can have cotton wool spots also in the patients who are having a hypertensive retinopathy some more signs you can have hemorrhages in the deeper layers of retina okay you can hemorrhages in the deeper layer of the retina you can have hemorrhages in the superficial layers of retina if you get it in the superficial layer of retina i call them flame shaped hemorrhages and if you have them in the deeper layers you call them dot plot hemorrhages also you can have like your diabetic retinopathy you can have some exudates in the outer plexiform and in a nuclear layer these are called hard exudates okay and when this hypertensive retinopathy is there for long duration it basically changes the reflex that is coming from the vessels i call it copper wiring and silver wiring okay so copper wiring is a reddish brown reflex and a silver wiring is opaque whitish reflex which is seen in the later stage of diabetic retinopathy so i write it here copper wiring is the reddish brown and the silver wiring which is the opaque white reflex that is coming from the vessels and last but not the least when there is a malignant hypertension there is a disc edema also so the optic nerve can also be basically aligned or optic nerve can also be basically involved in the hypertensive stage of the malignant hypertension which is basically the disc edema okay so not only the signs can be in the retina because the vessels are there in the choroid also you can have some choroidal signs also the two important signs which are there in the choroid that you have to remember they are the elching spots and the seagrid streaks so first of all what is the elching spots do not confuse it with the elching pearls remember this is the eponym the elching pearls are basically seen in the patients who are having a posterior capsular opacification but the elching spots are basically infarcts in the choroidal area okay so just remember here the elching spots are the choroidal infarcts Single, similarly you can have some darkish pigmented lines which is basically due to the pigments which are depositing on the choroidal vessels okay so this pigments which are depositing on the choroidal vessels i call them seagrest streak okay so they are called seagrest streak which are the pigments that are deposited over the choroidal vessels okay so now i would just show you few pictures so that you can understand how the hypertensive retinopathy looks like so if you can see in this picture you are seeing some hemorrhages okay all around and if you can see this is the silver wiring can you see the whitish reflex that is coming from the arteries so this is the silver wiring now i would show you the salu sign if you can see the arteries here can you see these are the arteries and they are deflecting at the arterio venous junction so this deflection of the arteries at the arterio venous junction i call them salu sign okay then we have the bonnet sign which i told you is the banking of the veins and then we can have some spots where you can have blurry margins here can you appreciate so these are the blurry margins yellowish blurry margins which can you see which you can see around the optic nerve head so these are basically the rnfl infarcts retinal nerve fiber layer infarcts okay and they are called soft exudates and also they are called a cotton wool spots so remember the soft exudates and cotton wool spots they are not pathognomic of any disease they can be seen in any type of vasculitis okay now i have a question for you a 65 year old patient with hypertension came with the following fundus finding what is your diagnosis here so your options are macular edema diabetic retinopathy subhyaloid with subretinal hemorrhage and central serous retinopathy if you can see here 
this is the area where you are seeing the dark red color and here you are seeing a boat shaped hemorrhage so this boat shaped hemorrhage which is above the retina so that's why you cannot see the vessels that are beneath it okay so this boat shaped hemorrhage what i call it i call it subhyoid hemorrhage okay and this area where you can see the vessels which are above them this is basically a subretinal hemorrhage okay so the hemorrhage is beneath the vessel so i call it a subretinal hemorrhage and when the hemorrhage is above the retina i call it preretinal hemorrhage or a subhyoid hemorrhage and this is basically i call it boat shaped hemorrhage okay so both these subretinal subhyoid and preretinal hemorrhages and even if the bleeding is in the vitreous cavity that i call vitreous hemorrhage they all can be the complications of your hypertensive retinopathy okay so what are the complications of the hypertensive retinopathy it can be any type of hemorrhage in the retina so now i would come to the next point which is important in hypertensive retinopathy that is the staging of the hypertensive retinopathy so nowadays the staging that we follow in the medical line is the wong mitchell and the keith wegner classification the latest one is the wong mitchell classification that i would tell you today so according to the wong mitchell class classification the hypertensive retinopathy has been divided into three parts the mild moderate and the malignant hypertensive retinopathy so what is there in the mild so mild just have the arteriolar constriction the generalized arteriolar narrowing and there can be a different type of reddish reflex that is coming from the vessels i call it copper wiring in the moderate you have all the signs so if the signs are given okay so this means this patient is having a moderate hypertensive retinopathy so let's say the patient is having a salu sign gun sign bonnet sign or if there are the flame shaped or dot broad hemorrhages soft exudates or hard exudates all these come under the moderate hypertensive retinopathy the last but not the least is if you are having a disc edema so if you are having a disc edema this comes under the severe stage of hypertensive retinopathy this is called malignant hypertensive retinopathy why this severe grade is important because if the patient is having a severe hypertensive retinopathy or a malignant hypertensive retinopathy the immediate reduction of the blood pressure has to be done otherwise this can cause the death of the patient okay so malignant or severe grade basically needs immediate reduction of the intraocular pressure okay so with this i end this small session that is on the hypertensive retinopathy if you like the session just basically put it in the comment section as a thumbs up and please share and subscribe for the channel that is the let's crack neat pg channel you can use my code ophthal10 to subscribe for the unacademy platform and get the straight 10% discount on whatever course that you want and please subscribe for it you can join the telegram channel and also can get your doubts solved there